Amen. Every year in the summertime, my family has a family reunion in Connecticut. Every summer without fail. And as a child, I was pretty much raised by all my uncles and aunts and my parents and grandparents at once. But just a few months ago, my uncle Eric died. He had had a good life. It was a good passing. He was well into his 80s, and he had defeated stomach cancer in his 30s. So it was really a, a story of victory. But I missed him. His son, Blake, who is my age, pulled me aside at the family reunion this summer and said, Kate, I found something in my dad's files, and I want you to have it. It was a simple folded piece of paper, like a child's program. And on the front of the folded piece of paper was written in a, the handwriting of a, I don't know, second grader, third grader, the hunchback of Baghdad. I opened it up and it brought back a flood of memories. I had concocted this whole play based on a combination of The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Aladdin and the Lamp, both combined. And I had orchestrated all my cousins. I had cast them into various parts. Poor Simon was always the dog. And everybody had a part to play. And then I rallied all the grown-ups and made them sit still while this chaotic masterpiece unfolded before them. You see, when I was a very little girl, man, did I take charge of things. <laughs> but just as I was beginning puberty, one of my relatives said, now, Kate, don't you be bossy. Girls shouldn't boss people around. No one will want to marry you if you're a boss. <laughs> so I became quite shy as a teenager. I really didn't talk very much. I wasn't bossy at all, but the problem was I wasn't happy either. The only place I was happy was on the stage because I could be big and it was okay because it wasn't really me. So I decided, you see, I remembered my baptism. I remembered, because I was five, how the priest had marked me as Christ's own forever. I thought it stuck. Maybe people could see it. I wasn't sure. But I thought that maybe God must be calling me to become Meryl Streep. <laughs> so I went to Vassar, because that's where Meryl Streep went. Today, we're going to baptize five beautiful, incredible children. Ruby Jane, Jason, Natalia, Blake, and Madison. Each one of these children has been designed by God to lead an incredible life. And God, through baptism, will mark them as Christ's own forever. And what I love about the Episcopal Church is that we admit we don't have all the answers for these children. In today's gospel, in fact, Jesus is talking about being the bread of life, and he's been talking about the same thing for three weeks. Did you notice that? And it's so incomprehensible and confusing that a lot of the followers leave. They leave him. They go home. They say, this is too confusing. This is too hard. We don't understand. 
and they walk away. And Peter turns to Jesus and Jesus says, are you going to walk away too? And Peter says the most wonderful thing. He says, Lord, where could we go? We're confused too, but where could we go? You're the one who has the words to eternal life. We may not have all the answers, but we know who you are. And all we need to know is that we want to follow you. When I was a child, some of my favorite books were The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. The second book, Prince Caspian, is the story of how these four kids, the Pevensies, Peter, Susan, Esmond, and Lucy, who've been kings and queens in Narnia, have to go back home to re the reality of this world where they're just kids. But later on in their lives, while they're still kids, they're called back to Narnia. But the only problem is that hundreds of years have passed in Narnia. They know that they're being called to help their friends, but they have to find their friends. And they have to wander through this enormous forest with lots of hills and trees, and it's dark, there are no paths, and they don't know where they're going. And as they're wandering through this forest, the youngest among them, Lucy, she sees a glimpse of the great Aslan, the great lion, who's the Christ figure. And she says, I think I see Aslan. We need to go that way. But her brothers and sisters say, we don't see anything. Lucy, you can't go off by yourself. Follow us, listen to us. And she starts to cry, but she follows them. And they get more and more lost. That night, they go to sleep in the darkness of the woods, and Lucy has a dream. Aslan the lion appears to her and says, I was calling to you. Didn't you see me? And she said, I saw you. I wanted to go. Just come with me, Aslan says. And Lucy says, but, but my brothers and sisters wouldn't come. But you need to come with me anyway. But I'm scared, she says. I'm scared to go alone. You won't be alone, Aslan says. I'm here. I've always been here. I will always be with you. So the next day, they're walking through the forest, and Lucy sees a glimpse of Aslan. He shakes his mane, and all of a sudden, she sees his brilliant golden self, and she says, there's Aslan. I'm going, guys. If you don't want to come to me, too bad. And she starts walking the other way. Her brothers and sisters say, Lucy, you can't go off by yourself. And they grumble and they kvetch, but they follow her. And as they're following her, as the hours pass, one of them says, wait, I think I saw his tail. Oh my gosh, I, I think I saw him. And throughout the day, they begin to see Aslan more and more until they're saying how sorry they are that they didn't believe her from the beginning. And she takes them to where they needed to go because Aslan is leading the way. Children, the early Christians weren't called Christians. They were called the people of the way. They didn't have all the answers to all the questions, but they knew how to follow the one who was ahead of them. You see, God's going to call you to something special. Every day, God will help you. If you learn how to pray, God will help you make decisions. God will help you walk in the right ways. I started seriously praying more in college, and I did theater, and I did religion, and it was over the years, it was like the pieces of a puzzle started to fall together, and I realized, oh, I'm not called to be Meryl Streep, I'm called to be a priest. So I called up my priest at home, who was a newly ordained woman, and I left a message on her voicemail. I think I want to be a priest. She left a voicemail message back. I'm not surprised. Let's have lunch.
after your baptism, all of you, after the baptisms, you're going to find your way out into Tolliver Hall where there's lots of different ministries for you to explore. I want you to ask yourself, where is the lion walking ahead of me? What is Christ asking of me next? You see, God doesn't often just give us a big strategic plan. God calls us from one step to the next step to the next step. What outside there calls your name? What are you supposed to do next? Walk with me in the way. Walk with these children and let's support them in their lives as they discover the fullness of who God has called them to be as they walk with us along the way. Amen.